Amy here with my lovely daughter, Lily. Lily. And, and today we're gonna teach you about praying mantis babies. We have to cut up the egg first. Yeah, so here's what happened. We set this out in the yard and we followed the instructions. It said that if we wanted to really know when they were hatching, to leave one of the egg sacs in the container with the lid on so that, you know, when the eggs hatch, the nymphs wouldn't be able to get out. You'd be able to see them. It'd be great. We were thinking we'll watch them and then set them free. Weeks went by. I checked the website and it said it can take, well, up to six weeks. So it's now been over seven weeks and this is just kind of getting silly. I did email the company. They said it's kind of strange that it didn't hatch. Um, they're thinking that it was out in full sun, but it wasn't. We ha like I made sure to keep it out of direct sunlight. I tried to move it away from the sprinkler. Like there's really nothing that should have stopped this thing from hatching. So I want to cut into it and see what's going on inside. And I thought I'd make a video of it and you know, see what's going on in here. And Lily thought she would like that too. So you ready? Okay. You ready? Ready. Okay, so I want you to stand somewhere, not right next to my knife. Okay, so we have the egg sack. And it's, it looks the same as it did when it came. What happens is the little praying mantises, the babies come out of the little flaps and stuff that are all over this. But I don't know where they come from, so we're gonna cut into it really slowly, okay? Can I can't you... believe we're gonna see a baby praying mantis. Well, the inside looks just like the outside. See, Lily? Where's the baby? I don't know that we're gonna find any babies. This is what I've got so far. The inside looks just like the outside. may have found something here. So here's what I've found so far. Might even go get the uh, microscope to look at this. I think these here, I think these are the seed, the um, eggs. I think these are the eggs. And then over here, they're just kind of stacked right on top of each other inside this egg sac. So I think I'm gonna actually go get my microscope and give this a look under the microscope. There's the seeds and there's the egg sac. It's really porous. Basically, we've got these um, almost envelopes, like flaps. That's got to be where the little larva, or um, hatched nymphs, rather, um, crawl out of. And there's one right here that looks like it was an egg that it never hatched, but it's... About as close to a hatched egg as I've been able to find so far. 
I'm gonna cut into this to see what these little eggs are doing. Here's what's inside. You can see that there are some remnants of some eggs, but I don't think they ever matured or hatched. This here was an egg. At least that's my assumption. Whoop, it dropped that one. There's some nymphs. I found them. Definitely never finished developing. So for whatever reason, these did die. There's a baby nymph. What well, would have been a little praying mantis, but it never finished developing. So I don't know what caused these to die, but there they are. I'm going to have a look at those under the microscope, too. That's what it looks like with the microscope. There's its little legs. Oh yeah, those would have been pincers right there. Uh... Lily, I found them. Do you want to see? It's a baby mantis, and it never finished developing. I don't even know which side's the head. It's really interesting. We cut open a praying mantis egg sac. We found a, a mantid nymph that never finished developing, and there are hundreds of them in there, but I only took the one out to get it under the microscope. What do you think, Lily? Was this interesting? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Kid has gone to bed, so I'm going to see if I can further dissect this thing with the microscope. So, let's see here. Oh, hello. There's some other little bug running around inside my egg sac. This what are you? I wonder if some little bug could have crawled in here and murdered all of my praying mantis nymphs. Here he goes. Oh, wait, you see that he moves around. Well, that wasn't, that was an interesting turn of events. Okay, so that's... a baby praying mantis. Guessing this is the head up here, and that would be the tail, and there are the legs. Huh. What's really interesting is that this, this part right here, this is where they come out of. So, yeah, because this was like this. this. This flap here that I opened was closed before, and I peeled it open, and that's how I found all these babies. So they hatch and grow in here. There's another one. And then they crawl out from between these little flaps. This was really cool. Like, I'm, I'm really sad that they uh, didn't hatch because, you know, I bought them for the praying mantises, but it was really cool to pull this apart and see what was going on inside. Um, 
I'll probably buy another package of it and uh, try again. Probably not till next year at this point because they're all out of stock. But I think I'll send the these clips to the manufacturers that grow these and see if they think that this was caused by overheating or, or what could have caused it because we did have a really weird spring this year. It was really hot and then really cool and really wet and I, I don't know. But if them stopping growing at this stage where you know they're still very undeveloped, if that could be caused by too much heat, maybe that is what did it. And in which case, the next time I buy one of these, I'll probably just leave both egg cases in the container and leave it in my house where it's temperature controlled and I know it's not going to get too hot and then I'll just keep an eye on it every day and when it hatches then we'll put it outside <laughs> because that, uh, I'd rather do that than have this happen again um, because yeah this is this is complete decimation I'm pretty sure all of these babies are dead um, and I also wonder if that other little bug we saw crawling around had anything to do with it, but I doubt it. I don't think that that little thing could have killed the entire case of eggs. Um, even if it was a whole infestation of those, still, I don't know. I don't see any evidence of these being eaten. It just looks like they stopped developing. So I'm guessing that the, the egg cases did get too hot one last thing before I go. Um, I never did hear back from the manufacturer, but I was doing a whole lot of research on this topic uh, while I was working on this video. Um, and I came across this fabulous website, keepinginsects.com. Excellent resource. It has a whole bunch of different species of mantises. The one that uh, I see the most, which is the green one, that's what I see here in the Inland Northwest, um, is of the genus Sphodromantis, and there are several different species. Bassettii is the one they talk about, but they also mention Linnaeola, and there are a few others down here if you actually read the article. Um, but it goes into uh, a description of them, their appearance, uh, the behavior, and the environmental conditions that they want. So right here, a target air humidity is about 50%, and the target temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius, which is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So nice and comfortably warm for us. Um, and then it goes into group housing, all kinds of things you would need to know to keep these fabulous insects as pets. Okay, they include breeding instructions, the whole night. And it's got a whole bunch of different mantis species as well as stick insect species and other insect species um, that you can read up on. I'm going to show you my favorite just as a little side note tangent here because it's pink. <laughs> this is called the orchid mantis and it is uh, found in Malaysia. So not here. But how beautiful is that? I mean, come on, that is just a gorgeous insect. So I emailed the makers of this website and they did get back to me. I sent them the um, unedited footage for this video and so she watched it and I heard back from Linda um, who says she thinks the mantises are fully developed but could not get out. The egg sac can get super firm and tough if it is too dry, then they cannot exit it. This is very common. The mantises are fully grown, as you can see from other videos of mantises hatching. And then the nymphs hatch in a weird shape as the ones that I found, and then they molt right away into their first instar. Then they look like actual mantises. And she went on to say about the little bug, the other insect seems to be a springtail. I could not see it for sure, but they are harmless to Uthica and very commonly found everywhere. So. Thank you so much, Linda, for your reply. I really appreciate helping, helping me answer this question. Um, I did reply just now, um, is there any way of preventing the Uthica from drying up like that in the future? And I'm kind of assuming that the answer has to do with the humidity um, because as they said on their website, they want 50% humidity is, is ideal, that's the target, then I'm just 
making assumptions here because I'm not a very experienced entomologist. I am a horticulturist, right? But uh, the target air humidity being about 50%, it doesn't usually get that humid here in the inland northwest, although this spring was pretty humid. We got a lot of rain, um, which did keep the air rather, rather moist. Um, but if that's the case, when I do this again, because I will, it was super fun, I will do this again, I'm going to buy the container and I'm just going to keep the container in my house. I'm not going to put it outside. I'm going to keep it inside, keep my eye on it, because I can control the humidity and I can control the temperature and I can control all of these things inside my house. So that's what I plan on doing. And um, so look forward to another video about praying mantises next year because I will do this again um, and yeah I, once again Linda from uh, keepinginsects.com thank you so much for your reply so thank you for watching especially all the way through I really appreciate it if you'd like to see my future videos make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notifications um, I've been posting every Wednesday for Weed Wednesday and then I've also been posting every Friday for Flower Friday and I will continue to do that especially on Friday all through the winter. I've got a lot of fun things planned for upcoming videos even in the cold darkness of winter I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to do some book reviews on gardening books, some of my favorite gardening books. I'm going to talk about different flower families and why things are classified the way they are. I've got all kinds of really fun ideas. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications by ringing the bell. And with that said, thank you again, and I will see you in the garden.